I was just recently at uh, the Electromagnetic Field Festival, right. um, which is an amazing uh, hacker maker festival, uh, camping festival though. So it's in a field, electromagnetic field. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a great name, it's a quality name. Something that they always do at EMF is uh, they hand out badges and because it's a maker festival, the badges are actually little electronic devices. It's a fairly sophisticated machine. It's got a lot of features. Obviously, it has the screen, but it also has Wi-Fi. It, in fact, has an app library, and these are all downloaded over the Wi-Fi and installed. Like, let's install a, let's install a game. What should we do? Pong. Ah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I got to so move my bat tilt? by tilting. Yeah. Oh dear, I'm losing. Uh, most of these apps were developed actually at the festival or shortly afterwards. And the reason that uh, it was so easy to make all of these apps is because the board uses MicroPython, which is something which uh, I hadn't used before. And I thought, and we, there's no computer file video about it, so I thought I would just talk a little bit about it um, as a way of programming microcontrollers. So um, the most common like hobby, small computing type things are obviously the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi. The Arduino is designed to be extremely easy to use, and it is relative to the microcontrollers that came before it. But um, you still have to write C code, which is not the easiest language for beginners to pick up. It's got a few complexities and some gotchas there, which any language has, but yeah, C, C, is, a, C is a tricky language in, in many ways. Whereas this is a microcontroller that you can program in Python. And so previously, if you wanted to have a small computer running Python, probably the way you do it is uh, to use a Raspberry Pi. But a Raspberry Pi obviously is a much bigger deal. It's a fully fledged computer. You could put a real operating system on there, um, or even something like Windows if you wanted to. Um, I don't, I don't judge, you know, if you wanted to do that. <laughs> your own Raspberry Pi in your own time. Um, behind closed doors, you know, it's fine. Um, <laughs> but the point is, having a whole operating system uh, is just a whole bunch of extra complexity, um, which uh, is unnecessary for a lot of small microcontroller type tasks. So um, it's nice to have uh, a system that you can literally just put a Python file on and it runs directly with no uh, appreciable operating system underneath. It's just Python on a microcontroller. It was a Kickstarter a couple of years ago. They developed this interpreter to allow Python to run on microcontrollers, and then also a board specifically designed for this, which you can buy. But um, it's open source, so there are a few different boards that can run it, and including this, the tilde. But obviously you can't buy these, I don't think. You only get them by going to EMF. Um, so, so it's a kind of a bit like the Arduino model, is it? Or the, you know, right, quite similar to an Arduino, anyone, yeah. Anyone could buy, everyone could make their own, but sometimes it might be easier just to buy one that they're making or something like that. Um, yeah, yeah, and it's just, it's like a, a standard, I suppose. Right, that, okay. That once you, once that's defined, then anybody can make their own chip or they can port uh, MicroPython to a different chip. And there, there's, a, there's a bunch of different uh, boards that it can run on. Let's just write hello world type application. You just plug it in with USB. This is actually the one I used to charge my phone. This is the thing I like about this actually, is the simplicity of it. You plug it in, it just registers itself just like a memory stick or anything else that you've plugged in as USB storage. Um, and then you get, you know, a directory, just dump a Python file in there, I think call it main.py, and it will run it. And that's, uh, that's all there is to it. With uh, the tilde with this badge. Tilde, is that the name of the badge? Yes. Previous ones were actually shaped like a tilde character. And yeah, because it has this app system, it's a little bit more complicated, but not much. You just have to make your Python file in a particular directory and give it a little header. The standard thing for an Arduino is blink, right? Where you have the LED and you turn it on and off every half second. That's the tutorial thing. So let's do that. Fill in some details here. I am Robert Miles. This program will be called Hello World. There's a sort of a, I don't know if you'd call it an operating system, there's a little interface that the badge comes with that lets you navigate through and select which app you want to launch and that kind of thing. So it needs to know 
what the app is called and that kind of thing. If you get a regular, like a Pi board, the one from the Kickstarter or any of those, um, they, I believe you just put the file on and it runs it and that's the end of it. Yeah, here's the header stuff. And then we're importing a library. Pi B is this library which contains stuff for interacting with the board's hardware. So we're just initializing this LED variable to be LED1, this little one, the one next to the one that's currently flashing, LED A. And then we just have a while loop, toggle the LED, wait 500 milliseconds, which is half a second. And that is it. All we need to do is put this file in a directory called, you know, hello world or whatever in the app directory. And that's it. Save that, unmount it. Very important to um, safely remove hardware, you know? Don't just yank out your USB devices willy nilly. Um, usually I'd say life is too short for that kind of thing, but... And there we are. So now we're running it, the light is blinking, success. But uh, obviously this board is capable of a lot more. It's got this nice screen. Let's, um, let's put something on the screen. Again, there's this nice graphics library. You have to initialize it. And then I think you can just do... This is, this is from, from memory. I think you just do that and then you give it the coordinates you want to write at the text and the color, which are just in there as constants. And I think that should do it. So we'll restart the board and then we can just, I'm editing this on the board itself. Like this file, I have it open on the external drive, which is the board. So you can do all of your development right there on the board. Unmount it again, restart. Yeah, and now it says, Hello world. And the blinking light still. So it's really that simple. And you know, Arduino is pretty simple, but this is easier. And then of course you have the Python language, which is a wonderful, you know, powerful uh, and easy to use language, which I highly recommend to anyone. The board itself has a bunch of features. Firstly, output pins for all kinds of different things. So the idea is you can use this board much like you would an Arduino to drive some other electronics. These connectors around the edge here are designed for conductive thread. So if you wanted to make some kind of clothing that does something fancy with your badge built into it, you can do that. Somewhat bizarrely, these contacts here are for four servo motors. So you could drive servos with it. There's four of them if you wanted to make a drone. Possibilities are endless. It's the Zombocom of... Uh of boards, you know, the only limit is yourself. Um, and there's a competition uh, for people who went to EMF to, to, who can do the coolest thing with the badge before next time. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to enter that, but I did try making an app. I've made, uh, I wrote a solitaire game um, because I was having fun with the graphics libraries and I wanted to Let's see if see I could draw all the different cards and stuff. I don't like solitaire. So I only did the best bit. This is the, <laughs> this is the good bit of Solitaire, the bouncing cards. <laughs> so we've got uh, Windows 3.1 references mixed in with uh, <laughs> war games mixed in with yeah. um, your sense of humour. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just wanted to see if I could do it. But so have you drawn those cards and everything, or are they in the libraries? Um, no, yeah, this is all... In fact, these are all drawn with the basic drawing functions. So fill rectangle or fill polygon, that kind of thing. Simple. I can show you the program, actually. This is my solitaire program. So they're the same delay function we were using before. And define the cards. I don't have face cards yet. The, I don't have the jack, queen, and king. That requires more artistic <laughs> skill than I'm able to bring to bear right now. And also, the thing I like about it right now is it's one file. I don't have any external images to copy in or anything. Basic stuff, you know, it's not, none of it's complicated. And you expose the plastic at the surface in particular regions, according to the pattern. And the important thing is when the, this particular polymer is exposed to light, it becomes soluble. The, the regions that aren't exposed aren't soluble. So then you...